Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video. Today, we have a lot of stuff to talk about regarding the crypto news, but if you are enjoying the daily crypto updates, make sure you press the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. We are already at 110,000, but I wanna to get to 150,000 before the end of June. And with a little bit of help, some likes being pressed and whatnot, I think we can get there pretty damn fast. Now, Ripple, let's get technical. From liquidity monitoring to building RippleNet topology, our engineering blog page dives into the details on all things crypto and blockchain. Now, even though I don't necessarily want to show you guys the Ripple page here, one thing that's very important to know about Ripple slash XRP is the fact that a very big part of what they're doing right now is just the first vertical. And what that basically means is a lot of what they're doing right now is just a start. Ripple has explained before how they want to transfer over from basically this cross-border payments realm into a newer phase, into a newer phase, into a newer phase. And this is something you really should understand properly. Whatever they have done right now is just like, let's say 1% of their total plans because they compared themselves to Amazon, which started out with books and branched out. I believe firmly that once this lawsuit is settled, which I think will be positive for XRP once more, they will actually start to really expand heavily. Now that they already, for example, got the loaning service in there where you can actually, where they can, you know, SMEs, I guess, can loan XRP for those transfers. That type of stuff, they might work out all the way. I'm not sure they're gonna become a bank because I told you guys all before as well, that would mean they're gonna compete with their customers, which is really kind of odd. But with all the connections in, for example, Wyoming, the company made there and everything that's happening right now, they have some big stuff planned and maybe the CBDC realm is another first step and then bridging everything with XRP is still, you know, it's still, I think, one or 2% of the total though. I think there's a lot coming and just want you guys to be prepared for that. Now, having said that, regarding the XRP price, we had a pretty beautiful dip, not gonna lie to you, all right? Again, in my previous video, I told you guys exactly I'm buying this dip right here. Uh, we did, and literally after the video, it only went up from there on forward. So once more, guys, this is the platform I am using to trade right now. It is called Bybit. There's a specific promotion for you guys, all right? And I'm gonna get a trading competition going on only for the people who use my link too. I'm trying my best to negotiate, but let me know what you guys wanna get. Should I do uh, like a tether winnings or should I do Legend Nano X's? Should I negotiate for more? I, the more people we get, the more I can give away, of course, right? And for right now, if you deposited more than 1,000 XRP, you've already automatically entered yourself into a giveaway of a Legend Nano X. There's gonna be five that are gonna be given away. Now, moving on. Terra posted, I told you, XRP doesn't wanna leave without me. 148 and 142 perfectly hit. Now that I'm strapped in, let's go. And the only thing I wanted to refer to here is the fact that I'm crazy, crazy excited. And I kept telling you guys, that this is definitely a good buying opportunity, mostly on the basis that, well, we just had another dip. And if you're wondering when to buy, these types of spots are perfect, perfect, perfect to buy. Does that mean we'll go lower or, or go up from here? Nobody knows, right? We can literally just go, keep going lower from here on forward, where basically, you know, we're going a little bit of an uptrend, then now a little bit of a downtrend, a little bit of an uptrend, inside a bigger uptrend. But I told you guys as well, I firmly believe that XFP follows Doge to, you know, some degree, definitely, and that this channel usually breaks the downside. And what's basically happened is exactly that. And right now we're just waiting for a swing towards the upside. But then again, we already got ourselves a nice little swing here going on because it's already up about four and a half percent. And it went down in total about, let's quickly check it out here, within just a couple of hours, about 11 or so percent. Once more, guys, buying, buying, buying is all I'm doing right now. I buy every time it goes lower, as you guys most likely know already. Then, Dark Defender posted XRP made 1,158% gains from 17 cents to 197 in four months. It is roughly 11 times 0 0.17, and this is without relisting and with an ongoing lawsuit. And when we say she will be $13.33, $20, dollars $100 based on historic patterns, EWA, Fibonacci, some say no way, I say we will see. Maybe wave C of the Fib of the Elliott wave analysis? I'm not exactly sure, but then again, I do firmly believe that a lot of this stuff is, is really just going on easily. And people say, please, just to be realistic, please, please, please. It might not happen this wave. It might not happen this run. It might not happen this cycle. But is it going to happen? I firmly, firmly, firmly believe so. A lot of those prices. Then, Ripple executives on XRP. Here's why 2021 is already off to a roaring start. I think we partially talked about this article already before, but if you really for yourself, just quickly look how much adoption they've already gotten, how much of a use case they're building out here, how much further they've gotten with the CBDC, and for a good part, of course, we don't even know about that because they're hiding a lot of it. 
how much uh, volume they've done, how many partnerships they've gotten. It's freaking insane. And it's only us right now that are not fully understanding to what, you know, gravity, I guess, has, has been going on for. But it's it's freaking insane, guys. Trust me when I say that. It is going nutty. And I do think that that will continue on for a little while. Ripple's progress is going to be even crazier once they fix this lawsuit, though, which could be in a couple of weeks, could be in a couple of months. We do not know. We're just waiting it out. But the Ripple executives, uh, I guess Ashish Burla was mostly talking about that right now, one of Ripple's employees. He used to be SVP of product. I'm not exactly sure what his new title actually is, to be completely honest with you. He's the general manager of RippleNet. Okay, there we go. Yeah, he's been pretty damn bullish on it. And I believe almost any Ripple executives has been bullish on it. For example, Ripple X general manager Monica Long also gave us an update. Once more, bullish, bullish, bullish. And the thing is, guys, these people can't say anything really positive about XRP, but they can, however, say it about the XP Ledger. And when we're saying bullish, we're meaning use case and just literally the it becoming useful. This billion dollar BTC transfer explains why Bitcoin continues to eclipse gold. I find that an interesting little little discussion, but I just thought about it. You know, a billion dollars. How fast can you really transfer that? And it depends. Since gold is really backed in the real world, it's definitely quite difficult because right now a billion dollars worth of gold weighs well over 20,000 kilograms or 44.1 thousand pounds. Transportation costs will be extremely, 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 extremely high to transfer 20,000 kilograms. And if you start to think about it, of course, you can theoretically have it where if you want to transfer gold to a different person, so you know, you're both, for example, keeping your gold in gold storage, LLC, Inc., whatever, pick something. You know, you can just literally write it over to somebody else's name and the gold gets backed in the same place. Or if you're both using the same service, but it's about really moving the real gold, right? Because let's say you just wanted to you know, give it to somebody else. You want to give that real gold. Things then become quite difficult because it's a freaking huge amount and it's so ridiculously expensive. And from that perspective, it's better as a store of value, gold once more, because it's something you can really touch. It's something that's not going to fade away with time either. And it's something that you can really just, I guess, deliver over to somebody else. It's going to be there in the next 1,000 years. It can't really just burn up or anything like that. With Bitcoin, of course, it's a little bit different because the the, the good side, I guess, is it's a better of a store of value in terms of scarcity because it can't there can't really, really be more than that. Uh, which with gold, you don't know the official end amount of it. There's no real cap, nor do we know if there won't be a new way to produce gold in a, in a, a long time from now and stuff like that, or maybe asteroid mining or pick something. Just there's there's more opportunities out there. Um, and from another perspective, of course, with Bitcoin that, you know, the transfer cost is just so ridiculously cheap. It is something we all have chosen to be a store of value as of this point and uh, a couple of points akin to that. There's just there's benefits to either, right? Literally, as of this point. Now, gold, of course, is still like seven, six times or so bigger than Bitcoin is. Will it overtake it? I'm not quite sure about that. But will some crypto eventually overtake it? I definitely, definitely think so. Then, Cardano has been pumping like crazy today. And I keep telling you guys, I'm extremely, extremely bullish on this crypto. I'll just keep titling my videos like that, though, because some people still don't know my stance on ADA. I am very freaking bullish. Now, we're going to get into some... Uh, Interesting territory yet again. I still believe that this had something to do with my account going down for a little bit. But then again, you know what? I think it might have been a combination of some words, which I'm not going to mention here. I will tell, however, some of the other guys that I know that have asked for it. Should I sell my Doge for VeChain? Well, that is definitely a good question. That is definitely a very good question. I personally have said before, and once more, let's make it really clear. None of this in these videos are financial advice. Not a single part of this is financial advice, nor legal advice, nor should you take this as a recommendation. This is just my personal opinion for entertainment and potentially, in some parts, educational purposes too. I'm just quickly putting this disclaimer here so they cannot say it's dangerous content. <laughs> just quickly making sure about that. I think Doge um, has seen you know some, some last leg to the degree that Doge is right now falling quite significantly, and they might fall down even further because this was the big event for it. Then again, I'm never saying mess with the Doge. I actually would say the contrary. Don't mess with the Doge. Shorting, like I did, is only good for a little bit of time. But there's a good chance that Doge is going to rebound and really just prove all these haters wrong. I still believe Doge can hit a dollar per coin. I'm not going to lie with you. right? And people are all saying over on Twitter, me watching people panic selling Doge dip, First time. <laughs> and then another one we hear was Elon Musk when he finds out his um, mother calls the Doge dip to point twenty, I think. And then just, of course, the, the, the little McDonald's meme. Then you have KB who says, now why in the world would I sell my Doge when I bought it at 0 0.02? I actually bought the dip. And then another one I think here, Dogecoin Rise posted, to those new Doge Army members, 
on this date, we went from 0 0.47 to 0 0.016. I'm not sure if the zero is supposed to be there because I didn't see Doge go to one cent. We bounced back and hit all time high at 0 0.75. Do not panic, the Dogecoin rise is always bigger than the dip. To be honest, yeah, I mean, there's so freaking much hype. There's so freaking much going on right now. There's so much. <laughs> damn, right? Damn, damn, damn. And to be honest, Doge, it depends on what you consider use case, but I think being a meme coin is a use case and it's definitely doing a good job as of this point. But then again, would I sell Doge for different cryptos? I mean, um, Barry Silbert said earlier today, do it. And I'm going to, to some degree, also agree where I'm saying, yeah, if you made a lot of money on Doge, you bought it zero for zero two, and you want to you know, put it into different cryptos right now, it might be a really good bet, right? Might, might really be a good uh, little thing to go for. At least once more, it is my opinion on all of this. Not financial advice. It might just be good to sell some of that, uh, that little meme coin and get it into some solid project. Then again... Who knows, right? Because it could just be at a dollar tomorrow. I'm not going to say you can't. You just got to be honest with yourself. It can literally do anything. So never bet against it unless you know, for example, like an SNL, that things are going to you know, really come down. You can then bet against it. But normally, I would not. Right now, I'm not either, as you guys most likely know. All right. So that was it for today's video. Hopefully, you guys all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And I will definitely see you guys again in another crypto update.